Okay, so today we're going to be looking at variable layer height in Prusa Slicer. And I'm using Prusa Slicer 2.1, so if you haven't updated to that, make sure you go and do it. But basically, variable layer height becomes useful in your 3D models when you have some curvature. And to demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to import a model. So I go up to import. I'm just going to imp import this T mug. And this particular model is from my Fusion 360 for beginners course. And if you want to check that out, I leave a link in the description below. So we've imported our model. And if we slice as we normally would, just here, you can notice that on the top here where the mug curves, so I obviously added a fillet to the edge of this mug to give you that nice rounded effect on the top. But if we zoom in, you can see that when our layer height is relatively high, in this case we're using 0.2 millimeters, you can see the stepping happening on the model itself. And when, when the layer height's high, it can sometimes not look great, right? Depending on what type of curve you're working with. Usually, you know, what you'd expect is if, if you wanted to add some detail to this, what you do is you'd go up here and change your print settings to be a lower layer height. But when you do that, it applies to the whole model. And that means an increase in print time. So you can see here this model at 0.2 millimeters layer height would take eight hours. If I re-slice that at 0.05 or 0.07, there's a good chance it could take over 24 hours. But what you can do is there's a tool in Prusa Slicer that allows you to have a variable layer height. So we could say, I want this to print up to this point, just before the curve, at a certain layer height, say 0.2 mil, like we've set here. And then anything above that, we want to go to a lower layer height. To access this tool, all we need to do is come back to the 3D editor view, click on your model, and then on the menu here on the top, you'll see this little icon here on the right, and it's kind of hidden away. And when you hover over it, it says height ranges. So if we click that, you can see now on the left, we've got this sort of slider up here. And you can see there's a yellow highlighted marker on there. And if we scroll in, if we scroll out, that marker becomes finer. And if we scroll in, it becomes a little bit bigger. And as we hover up and down, you can see on the model itself, there's that yellow highlight appearing. Now, what we can do with this is do that variable layer height. But first, we want to go up to printer settings and come down to extruder one or whatever extruder option you're using. And make sure you've got the expert settings selected on the top right. And that'll allow you to see more of these settings. And notice here we've got a setting called layer height limits. And the minimum and maximum are set here by default to 0 0.07 mil or 0.25 mil. And all they're referencing is back here, these print settings, these different layer heights. But in that printer settings option, if for example, you wanted to limit yours between say 0.15 mil and 0.25 mil, this is where you'd set that up. So you could enter a value in there, 0.15, and it won't go any lower than that. So if we come back to the plater, what we can do now is use this tool to create a nice smooth curve. So if we zoom right in, you can really see there the step in this happening and it's quite, it looks okay, but you know, when you print this out, it becomes really noticeable. So if you look at the bottom here, there are some instructions and it says left mouse button will add detail and the right mouse button will remove detail. So if we hover over the top and hold the left mouse button, you can see what's happening there. It's decreasing our layer height. And you can see now we've got this really nice smooth curve that's happening just on the top area of our model. And if we zoom in, you can really see what's happening. So this is our standard 0.2 millimeter that we sliced. And as we come up, you can see it gradually gets finer. But you can see it's added a lot more of a smooth curve and it's essentially a higher resolution. And you can apply this to anywhere on the model, but Bear in mind, you know, due to the nature of the FDM printers, it will apply it to the whole layer. So if we wanted to apply the smoothness to the handle, it would also have to apply it to the center of this mug. But as I said, it's useful for certain parts of a model, like exactly like this, you know, 
I'd want to print this relatively quickly. I could print the bottom portion of this all the way up to the top of this curve here in a layer height of 0.2 mil. And then I could switch it over to what would be 0 0.07 mil because that's what we set up. And it just gives you that nice smooth curve. And that's a cool little feature, I think, inside Proofs of Slicer. And a lot of people don't know about it because it is, it is kind of hidden here on the top. But hopefully you found that useful and you learned something. Uh, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one.